we move on to the last motion, which is uh, by Kelly Parry, uh, seconded by Councillor McCall, considering the future of the Lonehead Hall. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Phil Best. Um, first of all, I want to put on record uh, my gratitude to everybody at Lonehead Miners um, Youth Football Club, the volunteers and the parents and carers that do um, so much for the club, the kids, um, but also for the wider um, Lonehead community as well. And I'd also like to commend um, LNYC for the inclusive approach that they take to promote and include girls' football. Um, I think that should be the gold standard um, for all our sporting activities across Mongolia. However, despite this commendable effort and approach, they have been left in the dark by this council. For years, they have campaigned for an all-weather, a living aside pitch that's fit for purpose. Far too often, training matches are called off and far too often they've been fobbed off when looking for improvements to facilities. Promises and commitments to do something about this have came and went and the last opportunity to do something meaningful locally fell when councillors voted to move the proposed B-select replacement school further away from Lonehead than originally planned. So I'm moving this motion today to hopefully bring this issue to a conclusion once and for all and I hope that all councillors will agree with me that the future of Lonehead youth football depends on it. So let's give Lonehead and this amazing football club that does so much for the community and its people and contributes far beyond its remit of football pitches it needs and deserves. Thank you, Provost. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McCall. Thank you, Provost. I, I am very happy to second Councillor Parry's motion. Um, I think you've all heard enough of me over the years banging on about Pennycook Athletic Youth Football Club. Um, and the difference that it's made to them um, with the Astral pitch um, has been fabulous. Um, I was very pleased to attend um, Women and Girls in Sport Week a couple of weeks ago um, and cheered on the under 15 girls team. Um, unfortunately, um, they were beaten by a bunch of absolute thugs and hackers, including our goalie getting a kick in the head and another girl getting carried off. Um, anybody thinks that girls football is, um, is for wee softies, don't be thinking that. So I'm completely behind Councillor Parry um, and I would like um, also to take the opportunity to go down and watch um, some of the, the matches there. But unfortunately, when they're at this time of year, you know, it's like, well, is it going ahead? Is it not going ahead? We don't know. Um, what's happening, um, but I would love to, to attend along with Councillor Parry um, when we can actually get a, a, a nice day because that's what you need. And I actually um, I saw a tweet from another uh, girls club through in West Lothian and I assumed that the cancellation was for a waterlogged pitch. I assumed it was going to be the problems that they were having in Lonehead, but no, it was because they couldn't get a match official. So it does seem to be um, that Lonehead are very much the poor relations um, in the whole of Lothian. You very rarely see the matches getting called off um, for waterlogged pitches and uh, certainly no in Pennycook. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution. Councillor Emery. Yeah, th thanks, Promise. I don't want to comment one way or the other on, on the motion, but I do want to say a few things on bringing a motion to Council. I'm very disappointed, and I have to say this publicly, I'm very disappointed in Councillor Parry because I have read the minutes of the Lone Head Community Council meeting that happened in October where Councillor Parry said that she would get either Pauline or Russell to talk about a motion. I have not been contacted, Provost, and I am very disappointed. And I'll tell you why I'm disappointed, Provost. Since 2007, since the multi-member wards came into being, I have worked tirelessly with my other two colleagues in the ward, no matter the politics, and we have worked tirelessly together to get things done. And I'm really, really sad that this now is bannerlined as an, NA, an SNP motion and not the local councillor's motion. So I'm really, really upset about that, Provis, but, you know, I'll, I'll deal with that offline with Councillor Parry, and it's not for this debating chamber to talk about that today. The difficulty I've also got, Provis, and I have to say, um, not with regard 
to the principle with containment in the motion, but is the approach. We had a meeting under the auspices of the Community Council with Peter Frame in attendance, who is one of the leaders in the Lonehead Miners Youth uh, Football Club. And we actually got from him a list of what needs to be done. And we put it to Peter Frame at that time. If you could get one thing done, what is your priority? And that was to get the alleviation of the waterlogged pitches in King George the Fifth Park, so that pitches were playable. We then went and had a meeting, the three of us, as local councillors, with the said officials, and promised by doing it the right and proper way, it's actually in the capital plan that's to be considered at this meeting. Now, that's the right way to go about things. Now, I could have, over the years, promised, brought motions up to council, but I have always tended to act with the other two members in the ward to try and get ways forward, whatever the subject matter may be. So I'm very disappointed, not in the principle of what's contained in the motion, but I'm disappointed with the approach. And it seems to me, and I'll say it, Provis, although it will be denied, this is absolute electioneering, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with the people of Lone Head. And I am so saddened, so saddened, that, you know, we could have worked together on this, but instead it was taken in this way, in this manner. And the three of us could have gone, met with the officers, talked it through, put the, put the subject matter to the officers, but no, Colin Beattie got involved in it as well, be I hasten to add, Provis, and uh, got the answers from the officers within this council, and then it was taken to the community council. Now, you know, I can't do anything about that. They, they, you know, they have the right to have discussion. But you know what? It would have been a lot better when I get an email from Peter Frame saying, over to you, councillors. Well, the three of us could have actually worked together, and unfortunately we haven't. Provis, I'll finish on that because I am so angry and so upset that all the hard work I put in since 2007 with different councillors from different parties is just blown away because people are actually going on a vanity programme. Yes, uh, I believe Councillor Winchester also supports this project. So it is a cross party affair as far as I can see, and it would be nice if it was a more positive uh, move by the council as a whole. Uh, I believe also we have had a playing field survey in the past and there clearly are other football interests in other parts of Midlands who also feel that their uh, situation is, is not as it should be. We've got this delicate matter of public money going with private clubs but uh, they have community purposes so that is a way of solving that. Uh, could I ask Kevin Anderson where we've got to in the playing field survey on a cross, cross Midlothian basis? Thank you, Provost. Uh, yes, the Council did carry out a sports need um, and pitches assessment back in 2016. So I appreciate it is maybe somewhat dated now, given the, the growth we've experienced across the world in that period of time. Uh, and it is um, before me. So that, that covered football, rugby union, cricket, hockey, tennis and outdoor bowls. It covered the existing provision across each of the respective settlements of Midlothian and the future demand and recommendations. And specific to Lone Head, uh, it did give um, a number of recommendations in terms of rationalising the six locations of existing pitches, but also in its final position to seek to develop a new artificial grass pitch for training and matches, which would seem to correspond with what's being proposed today. Uh, we need to consult further with our colleagues in Sport and Leisure, which are no longer under my remit, to determine uh, the progress of that uh, as um, it relates to the capital plan to be able to report further in terms of the detail of that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Marie. Thank you, Provost. I wasn't going to come back, but I, uh, I was addressed that and named in Councillor Emery's what could only be described as a petulant rant. Uh, I felt like I should correct the record and uh, some of those points about Councillor Emery's tone I'll perhaps take up with the monitoring officer um, after the meeting. Um, but Councillor Emery, to reassure you, um, there was a discussion at the 
Community Council, which uh, we didn't attend. And as you pointed out yourself, there has been a series of emails, uh, correspondence between the football club and councillors and the MSP, which you haven't responded to. Um, Councillor Winchester would have seconded this motion um, had it not been for um, the kind of deadline. Um, and so I thank uh, Councillor Winchester for indicating that she would have supported this uh, motion, so it's not an SNP motion. The motion itself, um, I had written in a, a very partisan way and I had ran past the football club um, themselves. So I'm sorry that you have such a problem with me uh, representing the community council and community organisations, uh, but I am grateful that I've been able to put the record straight. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. So it appears that something like this project has been uh, in the sights of the council for a long time, that there is cross-party support for it. Uh, and I, I understand that councillors have worked very hard and I understand Councillor uh, Russell Emery's position as well, but I think for the sake of Lonehead football, we should all go forward positively on this. I sense there is no one against this motion. Councillor Hackett. Thanks, Chair. M my concern here is we have a situation now where any one of us could come forward um, and in effect um, alter the capital plan. And absolutely, I agree. It's been highlighted that there has needed to be some improvement to the football facilities at Lonehead, but that's not the only area that was identified in the report that uh, Mr. Emerson um, referred to. I mean, this view that Lonehead's the only place that it gets wet and boggy is just, um, well, it's ridiculous for a start. Pathhead has had these issues that's identified in the report. It clearly identifies that developer contribution should be sought to improve drainage uh, for Calendar Park. Um, that's in the plan. There are housing being developed, and it's my understanding that the developer contributions will be allocated to improve the park. I can bring forward several motions um, of areas that need improvement um, in Mayfields and East Houses, not just the sport pitches, but other buildings and other equipment that's needed by uh, sporting clubs. I look at um, uh, Kings Park, which is not within my ward, but it's well used by residents of Midlothian East. The tennis pitches, I've been under pressure to have those uh, resurfaced. Um, we also have other sports that require attention. I've participated along with uh, Councillor Leigh Douglas and Councillor Alexander on the large grant application and in there there were a number of sporting groups that had applied for things like flood lighting, other facilities that are required. So whilst I don't um, disagree with the sentiment of the motion, of course we would like to see improvements um, made in Lone Head. But I don't think it's fair that we single out one particular community when there are so many others that also require, um, if not more, um, support. So on that basis, I would like to move propose uh, an amendment to the motion that would reflect the fact that we do have the sports pitch uh, needs assessment that was done some time ago and I think does definitely need refreshed, but a whole fresh look at how what our sporting facilities are like, where that growth and demand is, and the funding that would be required to back that up. And that would um, include a whole range of uh, funding streams, which would include developer contributions, the council's own capital plan, funding from Sports Scotland, and other organisations that would help facilitate all of that. We've had the capital plan, the strategic one, I, I can't remember exactly when, but it was a couple of years ago. And it just feels wrong to me that we start unpicking that on a bit by bit basis. Um, uh, at this stage within the, the council cycle. Thank you. Thank you, but nevertheless, you're prepared for the motion as it's currently constituted to go forward, but also you want to have the sports pitch needs assessment, which possibly will take quite a while to do, so there might be a timing issue. Councillor Muirhead. Thanks, Provost. I think, I think as uh, Councillor Hackett said, I think it's a dangerous precedent to set for a motion like this to come up to council and for us to, us to agree it. Because there are absolutely, it's absolutely the case that there are similar needs in a number of communities that, that I'm sure that the local clubs didn't feel are being fulfilled. C Councillor Parry speaks quite passionately there and thanks the, the Lonehead uh, youth football team for all their hard work in the community. Absolutely, I, I, I accept that. I could also make exactly the same point in exactly the same way as Councillor Parry did about Anderson Rangers youth team who work with young girls and, and, and do a power in working 
in our community, which is, 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 a, is a community that hasn't been without its difficulties. And the kind of work that they do, the mercenary work, and all the, the effort that they put in, they also deserve the kind of facilities that we're talking about here. Now, it isn't necessarily the case that we can do everything. I'm looking at the sports pitch needs assessment there that was done, as Kevin Anderson says, back in 2016. It absolutely is the case that that, that needs to be refreshed. In that particular um, document, it talks about the lone head population in 2015 being 5,700-odd. It talks about the increase expected between then and 2027 as being 800, taking it up to just about, around about 6,600 people. In Goat Bridge, in the same document, we're already at that stage in 2015 at 6,500 people. We are projecting another 2,500 between then and 2027. And I think it would be wholly wrong for us to single out Lone Head for that kind of provision when we haven't addressed the provision for Goat Bridge. And I'm sure that that's the case in other areas where there are, I know there are teams uh, and, and clubs that do the same sort of work um, brilliantly uh, as, as is done in Loadhead. So I think we need to take a breath here, have another look at the, at the, um, the pitch needs assessment and do something a, a lot more planned so that the, the, all the communities in Midlothian have the potential to benefit from this kind of facility. Thanks, Boris. Okay, in terms of this amendment, are you saying you want the amendment to say that the loan head proposal should be as part of the sports pitch needs assessment or that it should run in parallel with the sports needs assessment? I think it should be part of the sports needs assessment, Provost. Is that what Councillor Hackett means as well? Yes, Provost, I mean, as Councillor Muir has pointed out, there are a number of other communities which one could even argue go ahead of the queue, as it were. I don't think it should be seen as that. Um, but there are other communities that are equally deserving of this type of investment, and it will require a capital investment. We all know through the discussions and debates we've had here previously about the pressures on the capital plan. Um, so I, I just think it's unfair to pick out one community through a motion here today um, over the top of other communities that are equally, if not more, deserving. So yes, I think um, the needs of Longhead should be considered alongside those of all the other parts of the building, I mean, we are here, whilst we represent wards, we are here for the benefit of every resident of Midlothian, and it's not just football, there's tennis, hockey, rugby, I mean, even cricket, um, as much as I love it, I know it's not popular in Scotland, but even that's mentioned in the sports needs uh, pitch assessment. And there are a range of other uh, sporting organisations and groups, uh, the, the bowls, there's the tonk that's growing, there's a whole range of other um, sporting facilities that are, that are on the increase. Um, and I think particularly in light of COVID um, and our view about how we use sport and leisure as the opportunity to improve our health, all of these things should be factored in. I don't want to see lengthy delays, and I, I hear Councillor Perry in terms of um, you know, some of the, the challenges and time that, that this has taken. But again, I'd refer Half Head um, uh, Amateur Football Club. They've been talking for years waiting for their pitch to be improved to improve drainage. Some of the clubs that uh, operate in, in my ward have been waiting for years um, for improvements. And, and as Councillor Muirhead has highlighted, a much larger community with a larger demand is also waiting um, for other facilities. So I just I just feel the way in which this is done would, would, would treat other parts of Midlothian fairly. And as someone with all the other councillors here that are responsible for the whole of Midlothian, I think there is a much fairer way of doing that. And I've just passed uh, an amended motion with track changes uh, to Mr. Anderson and Mr. Neil, um, if they would like to circulate that, if other councillors would like to see that. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to ask Democratic Services if they're clear as to exactly how this amendment is going to work. Um, before we move to vote on motions and amendments, uh, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Parry. Thank you very much. Let me quickly just say this a long time ago, and the administration has been in charge since 2017, it seems to me that it's all been kicked into the long grass and that something should have been done before now. So maybe Councillor Parry is perfectly correct in what she is saying, that she's taken the bull by the horns and getting something done for her community. I do acknowledge that in my community, Newton Grange Park floods dreadfully bad 
it even floods down my street, which really annoys me, and I still can't get something done as well. Playing fields and making friends are also unemployable as well. But then I think Councillor Parry's right, how can we not start with more head and then move to that? And thank you. Thank you. Obviously, Penny Cook and Fulton Hall have had uh, substantial commitments, so we are in a somewhat ad hoc mode. Uh, Councillor Parry again. Councillor Parry. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify some of the points that Councillor Johnson has made and, and just to outline why um, I wouldn't be prepared to accept um, that amendment, but not that I don't agree with the sentiment that Councillor um, Muirhead and others have made about their own communities. I think, um, you know, speaking with we're passionate about our own communities is, is a good thing and I completely agree with you, but you know, um, you are administration councillors and if you wanted to fix any of these issues, you could have done so at any point um, in the last term. And I also don't think that by agreeing this motion today, it would in any way stop um, that other work going on as well. And I would support um, that kind of work going on in the background for everybody's communities. Um, but uh, I represent my community. Um, we are so frustrated with some of those meetings that Councillor Emery talks about to be told, we'll do this, we'll do that, and it just never happens. So having got it to this stage and having got at least some cross-party support, um, maybe not from the Labour group um, at this point, and so I'm not willing to um, amend it at this stage, um, but I appreciate um, you know, kind of the sentiments expressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. So would you accept a twin track approach that at the same time as bringing forward the costing of loanhead, there is also the initiation of the, uh, the sports pitch needs assessment? Well, I think that's a, a moot point, um, Provost. I mean, I think agreeing the motion as it stands and in its wording in no way um, stops or detracts from any of that further wider work to go on. So um, I don't even uh, understand why that would need to be an amendment. So I'm happy to stick with the, with the original motion but would completely support um, that further wider work um, coming back to council. Okay, uh, last time to asking councillors Hackett and Muirhead, if there was an amendment on those lines, the twin track approach, would you be content? I'm sorry, Provost, no, I, I, I think that you know, what you're suggesting is correct here. I think we need to, to look at the balance for all the, all the communities here. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is um, councillors representing all these other communities are simply going to lodge a motion at the next council meeting in exactly the same way as Councillor Parry has, and the problem is that we've got to we've got to make that affordable and practical, and that's that's where the difficulties arise. And it may well be that a subsequent sports needs assessment indicates that areas like Goldbridge have got a, a more urgent need for this kind of facility than than, than Lonehead, for example. Thank you for that. That's very clear. Um, Councillor Curran, then Councillor Hackett. Thanks, Provost. I support the amendment to look at the look at it as a whole, um, all of Midlothian. And I'm going to be frank here. I don't think there's anybody that can put a stronger case um, than the Dalkeith members. Um, look at the deprivation and what is going on in Dalkeith Community the Club, and hundreds of kids have gone through that programme every week from most of the, the private area in Midlothian. So we could put a very strong case forward, and that's why I support the the wider Midlothian approach, looking at needs everywhere, then just working working from that. Um, I, I don't like this localism, but we'll start in one head, then go to Newton Range, then who's got the loudest voice gets the pitch. Let's look at it as a whole, and let's deliver for the whole of Midlothian, for all our kids. Councillor Hackett. Thanks, Provost. Yeah, I would like my uh, amendment to, to be considered, please. Uh, by the council, and I, I just feel this idea that there will be administrations had all the time to deal with this. We're all equally responsible for the budget, the capital plan, all of these issues which have been done unanimously. We're here to work as a collective on behalf of all residents, and trying now to sort of talk about the administration is responsible for X, Y, and Z. Yes, the administration leads the council as a cabinet. Um, structure, but at the end of the day, all 18 of us have the responsibility for guiding this council through. So to try, I just find it really, you know, to be brutal, petty politics in the lead up to an election, frankly. Thank you. Thank you, yes. I think it's, it's time to have a vote. Starting off with the uh, amendments, uh, I see Colin Cassidy's hand, hands up, but could I first of all ask Democratic Services, are you clear on the nature of the amendment and would you like to read it out to the members? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Provost. So the amendment is to uh, include um, Lonehead 
within a wider sports need assessment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cassidy, I think your hand's down. Councillor Curran, your hand's still up. Uh, could ask Democratic Services to therefore have a vote. If you vote in favour, you're voting in favour of the, uh, the sports pitch needs assessment uh, with Loanhead being part of that. If no, then, the, then the amendment would fall and then we move to the substantive motion that was originally put by Councillor Parry. Is that clear? Provost Councillor Hackett's hands up. Councillor Hackett. No. Well, I don't wish to interject, but I have, there is now a circulated amendment that wasn't as um, Mr. Gill had just stated. I thought Mr. Kevin Anderson circulated a, a track change amended motion for people to consider. Could that be read out? That's a substantive amendment. Would you like me to read it out now? If you could, it's not showing up in my chat. Um, Midlothian Council believes that, that access to sport for young people is an essential part of their physical and mental well-being. Um, can aid academic success and can be a tool to prevent health and other inequalities of outcomes. Midlothian Council also recognises the value of Midlothian's local sporting clubs and the dedication of the many volunteers over the years to provide sporting opportunities for girls and boys of all ages and ability. However, the Council also notes that in a growing area like Midlothian, training and match facilities in some communities may not currently be sufficient or fit for purpose and will be further pressured with a growing population. The Council therefore agrees that Council officers should bring forward a costly proposal or proposals to a meeting of the full council to address the issue and specifically address the need and demand for all weather uh, pitches and other facilities in each of our communities where sport is growing in popularity. Thank you. That's all clear, I think. Uh, Councillor Cassidy wants to have a word, then Councillor Parry, then I propose we move to a vote. Yeah, I, I feel I have to, thank you Chair, I feel I have to express my feelings here and say that this is like throwing a blanket over a per perfectly good motion on political grounds. I mean, Councillor Parry's not arguing for trying to make any kind of political gain out of this. She's fighting for her community. It's something that we could all take a leap from once this has been done. And I, I just feel that this is not the right way for this council to be going. We could do this with every single motion and we end up with no motions going through. So I, I just feel glad to say that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Parry, briefly before we move to a vote. Yeah, I just wanted to question the, the competence of what's been uh, circulated, Chair. It reads like a whole new motion um, and not an amendment. And if it was going to read like a whole new motion, um, it would have been helpful if the Labour Group had circulated it long before. Um, we've got here today. I don't disagree with the wider, um, you know, kind of looking at Midlothian as a whole. But what I do think is by doing that, that we're just going to kick the bone head um, into the long grass yet again. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not prepared to do that. But I would like to question the competence. Okay. Um, it's quite a radical uh, amendment, but it, it's still based on the wording that you initiated. Could I ask uh, Alan Turpey as to whether we need to treat this as a separate motion, uh, if it's valid to be posed from the floor, uh, or whether it doesn't actually make much difference in, in what form it is in. Mr Turkey. Chair, I think the first point is it, it can't be treated as a separate motion because we then have two motions concerning the, sa the same topic, the provision of sports facilities within Midlothian. Um, what has however been always been clear that it would be competent to any amendment to a motion within on the, on the day of the meeting, and that's what that's what has happened in this case, Chair. Um, so we have the motion from Councillor Parry, as seconded by Councillor McCall, uh, and there's an amendment to that that's been proposed by uh, Councillor Hackett and seconded by Councillor Muirhead. I think um, it is then coming to have the vote on the motion as against the amendment. The amendment as against as against the motion. So it is a valid amendment as it stands. Yeah, yes. 
I think we should proceed now to have a vote. Uh, those in favour of the amendment are uh, supporting councillors uh, Hackett and Muirhead, wanting the uh, pitch review of which Lonehead would be a component. If you vote against that, we'll then consider the uh, initial motion put by Councillor Parry. So, could I ask Democratic Services to have a roll call for a vote? Yeah, thank you, Provost. If you just indicate um, uh, yes or, or no, and I'll, vote, I'll do this in alphabetical order. So, it's for the amendment. Uh, Councillor Alexander? Uh, no. Councillor Cassidy? No. Councillor Curran? Yes. Councillor Hackett? Yes. Uh, Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Emery? Yes. Um, Councillor Johnston? Councillor Johnston? You're on mute. Oops, Daisy. No. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Lee Douglas? Yes. Councillor McCall? No. Councillor McKenzie? No. Um, Councillor Muirhead? Yes. Councillor Monroe? I, I believe Councillor Munro's uh, laptop has restarted. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to Councillor Munro then. Um, Councillor Parry? No. Councillor Russell? Yes. Uh, Councillor Smail? Yes. Councillor Wallace? No. Councillor Winchester? Yes. Um, is Councillor Munro reconnected? I believe he's having trouble reconnecting. Um, Provost, would you like me to just continue with the account? Uh, yes, you, you should do. Okay, so um, for the amendment we have we have nine for the amendment and against the amendment we've got seven. So the amendment is carried.